how to find your calling. Before we talk about our calling, I want to address the issue of work and the issue of career. So we're going to kind of break it down today to a few parts. First one is going to be about our work. Work is worship. When we work for God, we are worshiping God. Drop that in the chat right now. Work is worship. A few things I want you to remember about, about work is that work is a gift from God. When God placed Adam in the garden, He gave him a job. So having a job is not a curse. It's part of being in the paradise. A job is a good thing. Work is also builds our character. Work helps us to develop our character. When you work, you experience profit, not only financial but also for your character. Primary purpose of work is to develop character. While the carpenter is building a house, a house is also building a carpenter. One guy said, Howard Dayton. And so we must understand is that if you are able to work, God wants you to work. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 10, 11, and 12, for even when we were with you, we would give you this command. And you would think the command would be pray fast, read the Bible. And he says, this is the command. If anyone is willing to work, let him not, if anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. Whoa, that's a burn right there. You mean to say, if I'm not willing to work, let him not eat? Yes. And Paul is not saying you should be fasting. He's saying that you are lazy. You have to embrace work because work is a gift from God and through work you're developing your character, through work you're worshiping God. Work is a good thing. But what I want to highlight right now is this. Work like God is your boss. Come on, drop that in the chat right now. Work like God is your boss. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says the following, Whatever you do, work heartily as unto the Lord and not for men. And look at the promise. Knowing that from the Lord you will receive an inheritance as your reward. Wow! So look what God is saying. He's saying if you're going to work as though Jesus is your boss, He's saying not only you will get rewarded from your boss, you will get a payment, you know, you will get a salary. He says you will get from the Lord who is watching that you're working as unto Him, you will get an inheritance as your reward. I wonder how many of you, you will have a different attitude if tomorrow or tonight, depending on which time you're watching or re-watching. By the way, welcome everybody who's re-watching. If you will go into your work with an attitude that I'm working for the Lord. I know you might be a nurse, you may be, uh, you know, building a house, you're perhaps fixing cars, maybe you're cleaning a house, maybe you are a doctor, perhaps you are in education sector, maybe you're in the media sector, maybe you are a secretary, whatever that is, every single thing you do, my friend, matters and God wants you to treat that work as unto the Lord. If you will make Jesus, if you will do your work as unto the Lord and make Jesus like your boss in your work, God says, I'm going to give you inheritance as your reward. Meaning God's going to bless you. He says, you are serving Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3 verse 24. Come on, drop that in the chat. Work like God is your boss. Tell your neighbor on your right and on your left, work as though God is your boss. When you do that, you will see God will promote you. You will see that your, your excellence will go to another level. You will see that your effectiveness will go to another level. You will see that you will involve God in your work. You will see that you will become aware and conscious of His presence while doing, you know, secular work. You will see that His glory and His blessing will be upon you. You will see that like, like Joseph. Even Pharaoh recognized the Spirit of God is on Joseph in like a secular place. Why? Because when you do as unto the Lord, man, God's favor begins to flow. Another thing that we need to mention about work before we talk about the calling is that we need to take time to rest. Biblically, God commands us to work six days out of the week and to rest on the seventh day. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 says the following, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. Let me stop there. I used to have a problem enjoying the Sabbath and I used to have a problem taking a day off and enjoying my day off. And this was my problem. I missed the first part. It says six days you shall do all your work. And I found out that if I'm not doing all the work that I'm supposed to do during my six days of work or five days of work depending on how many days you work, if I don't do the work I'm supposed to do, that work follows me home. And on my day off, 
I end up doing that work because I didn't do that work during my days of work. On six days you shall work. The day of rest only follows after you do your work. See some people they slack off, some people they procrastinate, some people they keep postponing things and then when they have a day off their work begins to catch on to them, hunt them like a stalker and they're like man I can't rest, I'm always working. My friend it's not your work's job, it's you who needs to take responsibility to work six days and do all your work. Come on somebody drop that in the chat, all my work I need to do at my work and when you get it done then you can rest. Another part about rest is the Bible says we have day of Sabbath as a rest to the Lord. A day of rest is not to chillax, Netflix and chill. Nothing wrong with you know enjoying a little bit of leisure time but when you see a day of rest as it's about me instead of it's about the Lord, you will not rest and be recalibrated on your day of rest. You will in fact indulge in your flesh, pick up some sins, your flesh will wear your life out, get addicted to some things and then your productivity will suffer. I don't believe we should live every day hoping for a Friday. I believe your life's supposed to be in such a way where you enjoy working. You enjoy doing what you are doing. Sometimes you need to switch your job but most of the time you just need to switch your attitude. Start seeing that job as unto the Lord. Start seeing Jesus as your boss and live your life glorifying God in the place of your employment. One more thing I want to mention about the work and then I'm going to move on to the career and calling. For those of us who are planning for our retirement, I want to encourage you something about retirement right now. Is that retirement is not in the Bible, okay? What is in the Bible, we see Levites were serving from 25 till 50. At the age of 50 they would give up their um, regular work at the temple and they will not stop serving God. They will still serve at the temple but not in the capacity they used to serve up to the age of 50. What does that teach us? Is that God wants you, even when you retire from your full-time job, for you never to retire from being a full-time Christian. Come on somebody, this is good, drop that in the chat. Never retire from serving God. Never retire from pleasing God. So many people and the whole idea of retirement, it's really a modern idea. In the old days people didn't retire, they worked until they, they gave their last. God wants you to have this mindset to serve Him until your last breath. You might stop working at the age of 60, 65 but God doesn't want you to stop serving Him until you're dead. Serve Him till the end. Why? Because when you turn your elder years, your older years into self-indulgence, you're not going to be pleasing to God. As a Christian you're not supposed to imitate the culture, you're supposed to imitate the Kingdom of God. My goal is this, I am going to one point I'm going to step away from the official title maybe and the job responsibilities at Hungry Gen and younger people will come in. I'm hoping that day to come sooner than later but I'm going to tell you one thing, I'm going to love the church, I plan on serving the church until I die. I plan on, if YouTube is still going to be here, you can expect these videos are going to be coming out maybe not four times a week, maybe ten times a week but I'm going to write, I'm going to preach, I'm going to raise leaders. I told the Lord, in fact this morning I said, God whenever you're done with me, take me home like the next hour. When I am done on this earth with what you called me to do, I don't want to spend another day here. Because the Bible says David, he served his generation and then David went to be with the Lord. So my goal is to serve my generation. My goal is to serve God. Yes, I love my wife but I love Jesus more and I want to be with Jesus and I want to be like Jesus Christ. He finished the work the Father has given him and he was, hasta la vista baby, I'm going to see you later everybody, I'm going to be with my Father. So the idea that you know, you're going to retire and do whatever you want, just play golf, play with your grandchildren, just focus on traveling, nothing wrong with that. But at the moment that idea turns into selfish, I'm going to do whatever I want to do my friend, that is not biblical. Be, be like Simon, Simeon, be like Anna, be like people that Paul tells to Timothy, he says widows who self-indulge are dead even though they're alive. Meaning he says the moment you reach the retirement age and you are no longer serving God, you're serving your own sinful desires, he says you're dead, you're gone even though you're still breathing. 
be a person that serves God. Come on somebody, drop that in the chat. I'm going to serve God until I die. Never retire from serving God. I'm going to retire from my job. I'm going to retire from my full-time work, my vocation, but I will never retire from loving God, serving God and being a full-time Jesus freak. Come on somebody. Man, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right here, right now. If you're just tuning in on YouTube or re-watching this, don't forget to click thumbs up. Let us know where you're tuning in from or jumping in from. And those of you on Instagram, share it with somebody. Now let's dive into career versus calling. Many people don't understand the difference between career and calling. Here are a few differences. Number one, career is decided, calling is discovered. Career is natural, calling is supernatural. Career can change, calling does not. Career is done for money, calling is for eternity. Career requires education, association, but calling requires anointing. In order to find what you need to do with your career, honestly you need to ask what do you love to do, what gets you money, <laughs> what is not illegal and what can you do to help others and glorify God? You really shouldn't sweat about your career because Paul tells you whatever you do, do as unto the Lord. That's in Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. So career is something that you choose. It's natural. It requires a degree. It can change many times but your calling does not change. So how do you find your calling? How do you find what you were called to do? Okay, now when it comes to your career, it's whatever you want, honestly. Bro, as long as it's not illegal, as long as it pays you money, as long as it's helping people, whatever you want. The Bible clearly states, whatever you do, okay? Girl, listen. Your career, you don't need to fast about it. You don't need to go see the prophet, sow the seed to a Facebook prophet, okay? You can just choose based on what do you want to do? Like sometimes people come up, they're like, man, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I'm like, what do you want to do? I want to be a counselor. I'm like, anything else? Uh, I want to be, you know, I want to be a photographer or I want to be a teacher. Well, awesome. Which out of these three pays the most? People are like, what? That's not spiritual. Yeah, well, if you're going to, if you're going to spend eight hours a day, at least it should pay you money. Okay. Then the other question is, which one out of these three you're actually really good at? Which one of these three you're passionate about? And which one of these three you can bring the most good to this world? The moment you answer the questions, then you'll pretty much, you already have your answer on what you should be doing. And then just go and pursue that calling or pursue, excuse me, pursue that career. And in that career, be the light and the salt to your world. You don't need to be in full-time ministry to be a full-time Christian. Woo! That's so good. Drop that in the chat right now. You don't need to be in a full-time ministry to be a full-time Christian. Jesus is not looking for more full-time ministers. He is looking for full-time Christians who will live for Him in the marketplace, who will live for Him in college, who will live for Him on the street, in the gym, in the coffee shop, in the restaurant, everywhere. And if you agree with me, drop that fire emoji or number one in the chat right now. How do you find your calling? So we talked about how do you find your career. We talked about the difference between career and calling. We talked about the importance of work. But how do you find your calling? So I'm going to give you practical, just six, six practical tips on finding your calling. Number one, and some of you saw a clip that kind of went, uh, uh, that is on my Instagram. And I'm going to repeat uh, that statement because I believe it's worth repeating. Number one is get busy doing your general calling if you want God to reveal His specific calling to you. What is your general calling? Come on, help me out. What is your general calling? What is something that every Christian is called to do? Well, we're called to love God. We're called to love people. And we're called to live holy life. Very simple. I like to use three F words. Not those F words that you may be thinking about. Fishing, it's follow, forsake and fish. Follow Jesus, forsake sin and it's fish after souls. We're called to love God. We're called to save people and we're called to live holy. That's really the calling of every Christian. And then you can of course add to that, we're called to manifest the kingdom of God, pray for the sick and healing and all of this stuff which is 100% true as well. But that's the general calling of every Christian. So if you're trying to find a specific calling, I'm going to give you a tip that will save you a lot of headache. Do not overwhelm yourself. Do not get anxious. Do not become impatient. This is what you need to do and you need to do that today. 
get busy doing the general calling of God. Get busy doing what God called you to do. Love Him. Spend time in prayer. Read His Word. When the doors of your church are open, make sure you're first one in there. Don't wait for people to ask you to speak on the stage. You look for any place you can serve. You don't need a spotlight. You are the light of the world. You don't need a microphone. You already have a message. Okay? You don't need a position and a title. You need a towel. So get busy doing that. And this is what's going to happen. After some time, as you are doing that, people will start complimenting you. They will begin to say, man, you are, you're doing this so good. Like, you're amazing with kids. Like, man, when you prayed, like, I got healed. People will say things like, man, you're horrible with singing. Like, an elephant stepped on your ear. So that gives you a sign you shouldn't be probably singing, okay? Um, how did I find my calling in the ministry? Honestly, first and foremost, I just got busy loving God, fasting when the church was fasting, praying when the church was praying and I was obedient to what the pastor told me to do at the church. We were, I had to join a worship team because that's what he told me to do. We were setting up chairs because we were renting a building so we had to set up chairs, set up the sound system and so cleaning anything that we could do, I, anything I could get my hands on, I got my hands on. And so guess what started to happen? Um, I quickly got kicked out of the worship team, okay? People asked me gently and nicely, uh, please Vlad, don't sing because your voice, uh, <clears throat> yeah, not good. And so they tried to say it politely, but it hurt my feelings. And, but this is what they said. They said, you know what? This is what people kind of confirmed. They're like, but when you speak, when you preach, like, there's something different about you when you preach. And I'm like, really? Tell me more. And then they're like, I don't know. You just speak with passion. You speak like, I feel like I can relate. And like, and I'm, I'm 14, okay? I remember like preaching and, and feeling the power of God and, and on my body, like feeling a tingling anointing. And I was like, oh, this feels so good. So to me, this was like a sign. Uh, okay, maybe. And so guess what I started to do? I dropped the worship team. Well, they kind of asked me nicely to step down. And so um, I dropped the worship team and then I started to focus more on speaking. And then the pastor started to confirm that more and more. And then little did I know, I became the youth pastor because two youth pastors before me, one quit, the other one got in a fight with my pastor. And so my pastor asked me, he says, I want you to kind of do uh, the youth ministry. And that's exactly what I started to do. Um, then, then I felt the call of God. God confirmed that call. I felt the touch of God, which my second truth. So the first way you know the calling of God is get busy doing the general call of God. Get busy serving your local church. Don't sweat over position titles. Get busy doing the general call of God. Amen. Number two, how to find the call of God is special revelation from God. The reason why I said first get busy doing the general will of God because I believe my personal conviction Maybe it's because it, that's the way it worked with me. God did not reveal His call to me until I was busy doing what the church had me do. Until I got busy doing what I could in the local church, God didn't reveal His call. It was at 16 and 17, I was already leading the youth that I felt the call of God. I felt it on Wednesday around 12 o'clock, the song by Juanita Bynum, Show Me Your Glory, at the time Juanita Bynum was a big shot on TBN, was playing. I was fasting during that day because every Wednesday I took a day off to fast, to see God's face for the calling of God. I knew the call of God, I just didn't actually want to really do it and I wanted God to really confirm that and so every Wednesday I wouldn't go to school, I would fast and I would lock myself for about five to six hours in the room, the same office I'm actually in right now, um, not in here but in my church and right there by an AC vent on the corner by the window, I was laying on the carpet, stinking carpet, still remember the smell and the cry in my eyes out saying, God, I want more of you. And I felt like God came into the room. I said, I felt like I wasn't, I didn't see him. I sensed him. And I sensed that he just said, I'm calling you. You are called to reach the world. And that's it. I woke up from that place. I knew that I knew that I was called. So God can reveal 
his will, his calling through a dream, through a prophecy or through inner whisper. In the Bible, some people are called by God through an angel, through a burning bush or through a prophet. For me, it was an impression in my heart that ushered me into ministry that I am in today through an encounter with the Lord. But the first, in order to get the calling of God, you got to do the general call of God. Then God will confirm that by giving you a specific revelation. Now Vlad, what if I don't get a specific revelation? Still serve. Still serve at your local church. What if I spend my whole life Vlad and I don't get like a specific calling? If you're going to love God, if you're going to love people, if you're going to disciple people and win the lost, if you're going to cast out demons and heal the sick, if you're going to love your wife if you're a man, if you're going to love your husband if you're a woman, if you're going to raise your children, if you're going to pay your taxes, live with integrity, be the light and salt my friend, you are already fulfilling your calling. And you don't need anything specific. You don't need a full-time ministry to be a full-time Christian. You are pleasing to the Lord and so relax and continue to serve God and do everything as unto the Lord. Period. Number three, how do I find my specific calling? And that is advice of others. I already highlighted that as people came to me and told me, don't do this, but do this. You're better at this. You know, remember you're called to serve the body of Christ and a lot of times the body of Christ will discern particular gift in you that you're not even aware that is operating in your life. Many times the community of faith and other leaders can discern God's calling in your life better than we can see it in ourselves. It's important to pay attention to their suggestions as where we fit best into the big picture of God's redemptive plan for humanity. It's mouthful but it's powerful advice of others. Listen to your mentors, listen to your pastors, listen to your parents. Listen, wh what are they saying concerning where God has called you? You know some people in the Bible were called into ministry by somebody else. Some people were called into being a king, into their calling by somebody else. Samuel came and anointed and says, come on you're the king. And that's it. That was it. That was enough. And so if your pastor, you know, comes in, it's like, you know what, I really sense the call of God upon your life to preach, you know. God doesn't have to send an angel. That's it. You, you can take that on and run with it. That's supposed to be enough. Uh, but God might confirm it as you go down the road. Number four, your passion. Your passion is the sign. Your passion can be a cue or a clue to your calling. There are causes that get you excited. They seem to replenish you instead of depleting you. That could be a cue for your calling. Your passion could oftentimes be a strong indicator. If you're passionate about preaching, missions, songwriting, signs and wonders or even media, all of that could be God indicating you your calling. And I'm going to talk at the end about the process of your calling which will be so liberating and you want to stay till the end because that, that's going to be the everything I'm building on towards is what's going to really make sense everything. Why some people are not walking in their calling right now. It's going to set a lot of people free. But your passion is number four. Number five is your talents and your gifts. Is how you can know what your specific calling is. Passion is good but you must be, you must realize if you're not talented or graced in that area to begin with, you probably are not called to be in that area. Talents come with birth, but gifts come with salvation. Come on, this is good. Drop that in the chat right now. Talents come with birth, but gifts come with salvation. See, when you are born, God gives you talents. But when you are born again, the Holy Ghost gives you spiritual gifts. God graced you with nat natural abilities and spiritual gifts for the purpose of helping you fulfill your calling. Your gifts and talents can give you a cue into God's specific call. For example, if you have a natural talent for public speaking, and you have a spiritual gift where this anointing, inspiration and boldness becomes apparent when you speak, it could be a sign that God is calling you to preach the gospel. If you're born with natural ability to sing and spiritually you're graced with the ability to write songs, it could be a sign that God is calling you to lead worship. You may say, but what are my talents? Ask your parents. They'll tell you. 
and they'll they'll guide you in that what are your gifts you know continue to serve it that's what I'm saying continue to serve in local church because that's where the gifts will surface you know how did uh, how did Rebecca found the gifts from this unnamed servant who carried those gifts on 10 camels she watered the camels I always tell people you want to find spiritual gifts water the camels serve at the local church serve the cause of Christ go on the mission trips pray for the sick open your house start a life group start reading the Bible for crying out loud start praying start getting busy doing God's general work and you will see a lot of your gifts will surface the spiritual gifts and your talents well they'll surface you don't even have to be Christian to have a talent okay all you got to do is just apply yourself try different things and then your talent will surface number six the last way to know your specific calling and that is your experience so the first one we said do the general will of God you will trip on your specific will of God specific revelation from God advice of others your passion your talents and gifts and the last one is your experience God can use your mess and turn it into a message he can use your scars and turn it into stars Moses escaped Egypt and then God used him to deliver the people out of Egypt things that we go through are not just for ourselves it's also for a ministry come on somebody nothing is wasted your pain is not wasted your past is not wasted drop that in the chat if you believe God is a good recycler he takes what the devil meant for evil and he uses it for his good he recycles our mess and he uses it for his purposes we know that God not only rescues our past he will recycle our past to enhance his purpose on the earth look into the backyard of your past experiences and ponder about what you went through. Many times God will use those to fuel our calling. Things we're called out of can become breeding ground for where God is taking us. If you believe God is taking you somewhere, if you believe that God is taking you into your promised land and to your calling, drop number one in the chat right now. I have a friend who sits right here who is helping also me in the ministry. His name is Everett and he started you know a YouTube ministry for reaching new agers. You know where God delivered him from today become became his platform to reach other people and you can see his uh, YouTube channel right there there's other people that what the Lord uses delivers you from becomes the very thing that the Lord will use you in and so one of my strongest messages is the message about overcoming insecurities because what I went through so the topic on fasting and prayer is what I go through and so I share those things and a lot of times your experiences become the very things that God will use to take you into the ministry that that you are hoping to go into. Come on somebody, in Jesus mighty name we pray, we say, if you believe say Amen. Come on, if you're receiving something, if this was already beneficial to you, drop that in the chat right now. Let me know that you're still with me. Uh, for those of you that are just tuning in to YouTube, make sure that you click thumbs up or if you are re-watching, we welcome you all the re-watchers. We have a lot of people that re-watch us every single week, way more than watch us live. That's why we record this stream. So if you are re-watching, make sure you click thumbs up and also drop that in the comment of where you are re-watching from. Now, the last thing that I want to mention that is not in my notes but it's in my heart and that is the process of going from anointing to appointing. The process of going from I got the call of God to I am living in that call. I am walking out that call. The time when God anoints you is not going to be the time when men will appoint you. Come on, this is good. Somebody dropped it in the chat. When God anoints you, it's not going to be the time when men will appoint you. God anointed David at the tender age of a teenager. But David did not step into the calling until he was a mature adult. You may say, oh, it's because people didn't trust him. No, 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 no. There was a process. He had to go through the process of being formed, of being developed of being broken through the grinding process. God had to, because see you have to understand is your gift is one thing. Anointing comes through crushing. Anointing comes through that process of breaking. In order for a wine to be made, you have to take the grapes and crush it. If you don't crush the grapes, grapes with time will become raisins. And we don't want raisins. We have too many raisins today. God is, wants to make a wine out of you. But to make a wine out of you, He takes to 
through the process of brokenness. He takes you through the process of development. He develops your spirit. He develops your Bible knowledge. He develops your authority issues. He develops, He heals your inner wounds. He crushes your insecurities. He takes you through that where He teaches you honestly to be under a toxic authority like David had to learn. He teaches you what it means when you get promoted into a general and then they write an article saying that you are, you know, a bad guy and they're trying to kill you. He takes you through all of that. Why? Because God wants to trust you with His grace and power without it destroying you. Mm -hmm. You may say, nah, I can handle it. You sure? Because King Saul got the anointing and the next day he became appointed. It crushed him. His insecurities, in spite of his good looks, destroyed his anointing. In fact, he became mental. The Bible says inheritance gained hastily will not last. I'm a huge, when I was younger, I didn't understand this. Oh man, I pleaded, I fasted, I fought with God. God, why are you not giving me the breakthrough? God, I'm fasting and praying. God, 12 years, 14 years, nothing. It seems like I'm just hitting a ceiling. Why? Man, I did everything I could. I did everything I thought was right. Why? I look back now. I know why. God was forming me. Those years, they were not wasted. God was investing. God was breaking. God was... I was a snowflake Christian. I was an emotional roller coaster, okay? I was such a moody person. I would be... bad things will happen. Things didn't work out and I feel so discouraged. Something... somebody said something negative. I would feel so down. God had to knock all of that out. All of that. Break all of that. Crush all of that. So that I would become stable. So that I would become solid. So I would become humble. So that I would become obedient to my pastor who's my uncle. That I would deal with all of those issues. So that God can entrust me. I'm not in any way saying I'm worthy. Please hear me out. I did not deserve anything that I have today in the ministry. None of it. All of it is of grace. But I do believe God wants to prepare you. If men don't recognize your gift yet, it's not because you're not gifted. What if God is taking you through the process? Joseph, what if God is taking you through a dry pit, the rejection of brothers, the jealousy of others, the false accusation? What if God is involved in your struggle of your calling and He's preparing you for your breakthrough. So what do you do? Few practical things I would like to give you. Number one, never fall in love with your calling. Fall in love with God. Don't love your calling more than you love the one who called you. Come on somebody, that's good preaching right there. Drop that in the chat. Don't love your calling more than you love the one who called you. Where a lot of people are struggling is because they're, they made an idol out of their calling. They made an idol out of their ministry. They made an idol out of their gift. Love God more than you love your calling. Don't let your identity come from your ministry. Don't let your identity come from your gift. Don't let compliments go into your head, criticism go into your heart. Remember, God will not judge you based on how much fruit you have. God will judge you based on the work that you do. You can be faithful to God and never see fruit. There are people who sit in jail for 20 years for, for the gospel. They're never led mega churches. But in heaven, God will not reward us based on how many followers we have, based on how famous we are, based on how people recognize us. God will reward us based on one criteria. What you did with what you were given. That's only one criteria. I will be judged with that. You will be judged with that. You will be judged with that. You will be judged with that. Every single one of us will be judged by this. Not with how successful you were compared to Vlad, compared to him, compared to her. How successful you, were you with what you were given? What did you do with what you were given? And if you're doing everything you can and you're not seeing the fruit, you're not seeing the prophetic words being fulfilled that were given to you, my friend, 
Fred not. Surrender to God and trust in God's timing. Do not exalt yourself by your own straps of your boots. Don't try to push your way to the throne. David refused to kill Saul to get ahead in his calling. He trusted in God's timing. He refused to undermine authority. He refused to walk in rebellion. He refused to foster offense and nurse hurt feelings. He refused it because he knew God is preparing a great king and he's preparing his kings in the furnace of affliction. He's preparing his man in the furnace of wilderness. He breaks his grapes and turns them into wine. Oh no, God will never do that. He will, he protects my little, you know, fluffy, little comfortable snowflake feelings. Oh really? Did you watch Passion of the Christ? Did you see what Jesus went through? That was his son. Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am? The Bible says, he who desires to live godly will be persecuted. That means God takes us through these things. Do not despair. Do not be discouraged. Cheer up. Lift up your head. Square your shoulders and serve God with gladness. Serve God with joy. And if your ministry never takes off, make sure your heart is always anchored on God. Even if you will have to die for Jesus and give your life for Jesus, make sure you do it singing hymns. Why? Because ultimately it's about Him. It's not about my ministry. It's not about my name. It's about God. Come on somebody, drop that in the chat. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Don't rush. The last thing I want to mention. Do not rush into promoting yourself. Remember you are called to the body of Christ. Let the body of Christ, the body where you are serving, recognize the anointing of God upon your life, the gift of God upon your life and let them acknowledge that. It happened with David. Now it did take a lot of time for that to happen, okay. David was quickly recognized as anointed man but nobody made him a king. He was called to be a king. Nobody made him a king. They made him a musician but I want you to notice that David didn't say, uh, I'm too good for being a musician. I'm anointed to be a king. You're not too big for a towel. You're not too big to serve. If you are too big to serve, you are too small to reign. You are too small to lead. You are too small to be on the throne. And David was never too big for an instrument. He was never too big to be an armor bearer for Saul. He was never, he was never coming with this thing. I own this place. This belongs to me. There was no entitlement to David. And I want you to notice when Saul died, David did not rejoice. David was not obsessed with getting into his calling. He was so focused on God, make sure he doesn't screw up. Make sure he doesn't displease God in the way he handles the process. And David was not impatient. One thing the process will do, it will kill your impatience. It will kill laziness. It will surface every offense every hurt, father wounds, all of that stuff will surface and you will have to take it to the Holy Spirit and be purified in your motives. Oh my God, we don't know how dirty our motives are until God takes us through the process. When Saul died, David wept. Man, I, it's crazy. He wept and it wasn't a fake tears. He genuinely wept for Saul. See, God could trust a man like that. He could have easily killed Saul. In fact, God even gave him a prophetic word. I will put your enemy within your hands and you can do whatever you want. But David knew, David knew it's a test. What some people would see as an opportunity, his closest friends did, he saw as a test. God is testing me. And he said, nobody can lift their hand on the anointed one and be unpunished. He waited for the proper time. He served under a toxic leadership. Of course, he took a distance because his life was in the line. He kept his heart pure. He still fought battles. He built a little team. And then time came when it seemed like, that's it, David is going to be the king because Saul is dead. The problem is the elders of Israel did not recognize him as a king. They still put some idiot 
in charge of the nation. Only the tribe of Judah and Benjamin came to David and they said, you're the king. It's interesting, David never grabbed on the kingdom. He never came to them and said, guys, it's about time. Samuel prophesied, let's watch the video. Do you see the prophecy? Yeah, everybody should make me a king. What are you guys waiting for? He never did that. In those days, kings did that. Kings had armies, they would come, attack and take over. David did not do that. I see men and women doing that today on Facebook. Going online, declaring themselves prophets, declaring themselves apostles. They don't even have a church. The church never recognized your gift as a prophet. You're called to be a prophet in the church. You're called to be a prophet to the church. It's a five-fold ministry to the church. The church did not recognize that. Well, my church, they just don't like me. Well, maybe because you're still in the process. Maybe it's because you never show up to services. Maybe it's because you don't serve. Maybe it's because you have a spoiled brat attitude. Maybe it's because you're not effective. Maybe some other reasons. Well, nobody recognizes that. My pastor just doesn't like me. Well, Saul didn't like David. David didn't go and kill him. He still did it the right way. I'm not saying every person needs to do the same thing that David did. Some of you are called to go out of your church and be someone else. I'm not against that. What I'm saying is we have too many wishy-washy, snowflake, spoiled brat, poor little me, it's all about me believers who walk around self-proclaimed prophets, self-proclaimed apostles, self-proclaimed pastors, self-proclaimed I'm starting my own ministry because the church rejected me and being rejected by the church, building a spirit of offense, ministering out of the hurt and nursing all of those things and then they make mess instead of miracles. They commit adultery, they fall into pornography, God's protection lifts up their life and they make a mess out of their ministries because they don't know how to walk under authority. Therefore, they don't know how to walk in the anointing. They don't know how to walk waiting for their appointing. Elders appointed David. He becomes a king. But you know, king only of one, two tribes. Poor David suffered <laughs> over 10 years of his life. For what? Two tribes. Imagine, out of 12, he gets two. For seven and a half years, he's faithful with that. And I want you to notice, David is not raising an army to go and kill the rest of the tribes or go to kill the son, the illegitimate king and says, this is not right. You know, he didn't take him to court. He waited patiently. I know this is scary. I know what I'm saying. Some of you, it hurts you right now because that means you have to lose control. You're not in control anymore. You actually have to trust God. You actually have to trust God and humble yourself that He will exalt you in His time. Joseph, you actually have to trust God that the guy you helped with the dream who said He will take you out of jail, He's going to forget about you. But there is a God, He will never forget about you. He will take you out at the right time. My God, I feel the anointing of God right now. Drop that fire emoji if you feel it. Wait for God's timing. And the time came and the elders came and they anointed David as a king. It was the same elders who were there 20 years ago, 15 years ago. What did they do? Why didn't they not anoint him? What if it's God who was waiting and building David? God wasn't just focused on here and now. He wanted David to be a king that other kings would compare themselves to. That he could say, like David, like David established his dynasty and blind Bartimaeus shouted, the son of David. Do you want to be a snowflake? Do you want to just be like a firework and you're gone like a balloon that pops? Or do you want what God does through you really impact generations? God knows how to do that. But it has to be His way. For it to be His way, you got to walk every step asking this question. Not how fast can I go? How quickly can I advance this? But am I pleasing to God today? Am I pleasing to God? Lord, are you pleased with me? Lord, is my life pleasing to you? God, is my motives, are my motives pleasing to you? Am I pleasing to you, God? And if I'm not pleasing to you, God, correct me. God, change me. I don't want to hit the throne and find out I lost you because Saul did it. That place of calling without his anointing, 
It's a graveyard. It will kill you. It's dangerous. If you get that, that thing that you want but God is not with you because you went too fast. You skipped the process. You took the shortcut. You found a way to dupe things. You found a way to maneuver things. You manipulated your way to it. You lied your way to it. You slept your way to it. You, you did all of that stuff and it's, God was not in it. My friend, man that's terrible. I just want to challenge you. I want to provoke you. God's will must be done in God's way. Come on, can you drop that in the chat right now? God's will must be done in God's way. God's will must be done in God's way. Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. Let this cup pass over me, but Father, not my will be done but yours. It's the way of the cross. It's the way of calling. The way of calling is not always pretty. Sometimes it gives you mountain tops and sometimes it gives you valleys. Sometimes you have a crown, sometimes you have a cross. Sometimes there's pleasure, blessing and sometimes there's pain, brokenness. You're weeping, you're broken over people, over their sins over what they do. Sometimes you get compliments and sometimes you're hurt with the attacks. But at the end of the day, if His will is your goal, then His way is His method. Oh Jesus, Sotoko Rababa Sheketa Rabakata. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord God. Thank you, Father. Come on, let's just take a moment right now, wherever you are watching this right now, just drop that fire emoji. Let me just pray for those people who honestly you feel maybe discouraged, you feel lost, you feel like you're stuck and you got so obsessed with your destination disease that you lost, that God is more interested in you than in what you can do for God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for every person that's watching this stream, for every person that will be re-watching this stream, precious Holy Spirit who came to live inside of us to develop within us the character of Christ, to empower us for the anointing and for the assignment that we are called God. Father, I pray that you will forgive us for laziness. I pray forgive us for bad attitude. Forgive us God when we have had rebellion in our heart toward the people you placed in our life. Forgive us for nursing hurts. Forgive us for nursing offenses. God, forgive us for wanting things too fast sometimes instead of wanting You more. Father, I ask You that Your precious blood will wash our impure motives. God, and You know we have them. I have them, God. I ask You that Your light will shine where there is the greed, where there is desire to be known, where there is desire to be famous instead of making you famous God, where, where things maybe are there to try to prove something, to try to earn something God, maybe to fix some father wound, to, to try to prove something to people that hurt us. God I pray cleanse us Lord in Jesus name. Purify us God. Help us to serve you when we're not noticed. Help us to serve your local church, water the camels, even if it's hard. Help us God to serve the mission of your kingdom God, even if it doesn't give us followers, likes and recognition, applauses, accolades and, and another step forward in our calling God. In the name of Jesus Lord, I pray for every person that you have called that's watching right now and re-watching this broadcast. God, I pray that you will quicken that anointing inside of them in Jesus name. I pray that they will not be bound by a title, they will not be bound by a microphone, that they will not be bound by what somebody said about them, God. They will continue to burn for you, God, and that they will continue to serve you even on the street, even online, even in their workplace, God. They're not going to wait for somebody to give them a permission to love others, win others for Christ. Let them do it outside of the church walls if the church doesn't recognize that. Like David, he continued to fight the battles even when Saul kicked him out. Lord, I pray that you will give us a heart of humility. God, I pray that you will break that rebellious Absalom spirit that seeks to undermine, manipulate and cut corners. God, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ right now. 
I speak freedom from every spirit of rebellion, every spirit of Jezebel, every spirit of manipulation, every spirit of dominating, every spirit of control in the name of Jesus Christ. I break your grip right now. Every person watching right now, if some spells were spoken over you, where people said you'll never amount to anything, you will never succeed in ministry, God has closed the door for you, I break that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I break every spell of the enemy, every lie of the enemy, every witchcraft conjured up to you against you and against your ministry and against your calling in the name of Jesus Christ. I send the fire of God right now against those witches, against those warlocks and against those insecure toxic leaders who tried to curse you and paralyze you. Let that curse return where it came from in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn in the name of Jesus because this is the heritage, says the Lord. Their heritage is from me because their righteousness is from me. Be of good courage, rise up mighty warrior. Be of good courage, rise up mighty man and woman of God and continue to serve in the place where you've been planted. Continue to serve in the place where you have been saved, where you're being sanctified and where God is using you. And what the Lord wants to remind you, if you humble yourself, He will exalt you. But remember, God's time is not your time. God is always on time, but He's usually late on our time. He got you. He is coming through, but He's developing you as you headed to your destiny. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen, Amen, Amen. I hope you received uh, this word. Um, I hope you found encouragement today for your calling. Those of you who are re-watching, make sure you share with somebody. If you are watching this, share this with somebody. I know this is going to be a blessing to so many people. Um, precious saints of God, I want to take a moment right now and encourage you. <laughs> I will answer some questions if we will have some questions in just a moment but I want to take a moment right now and encourage each one of you. If the Lord puts on your heart um, to sow into this ministry, to support this ministry, sow where you want to grow. Um, if you receive the blessing, the Bible says, He who receives a spiritual blessing, let him share with the material blessing with him who receives. And so um, there's many ways you can give, Cash App, Venmo, Paypal, crypto and others may God bless you as you do that I am not going to be here begging or promising some weird stuff but if the Lord puts in your heart may God bless you as you give but I want to say thank you for watching I want to say thank you for being with me this Thursday um, John thank you for your one-time donation Patrice thank you for your donation and I'm going to stay for a few minutes and answer any questions that you guys might have so go ahead and drop that concerning the calling, okay? Um, uh, don't ask me questions right now about other things. The reason why is because I do streams about those topics. So I want to mainly target right now the calling uh, questions. So if you have them, just drop them um, and we will try to tackle some. While I am waiting for that, I um, want to say amazing, um, thank you for letting the Lord use you this is very helpful no thank you for sharing that I'm filled with the Holy Spirit in prayer the pastor you prayed amen 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 God bless you guys um, thank you so much so I don't see much questions coming up how do I know my calling um, sister you we actually just um, shared that so I would just encourage you to re-watch that okay what if you're not waiting and not doing what you should then you should do what God calls you to do right now. Um, I missed the live. Sorry, I've been wanting to fast over this topic. Um, Brie, re-watch the live stream. The moment I close it, I'm going to save it and it will be a great blessing to you. I really believe the Lord will bring a lot of clarity. Can I be a member of the church? Alex D is asking. Yes, you can. We encourage you to first join your church. If you don't have a local church, you can join Hungry Gen and then you can go on um, hungrygen.com slash zoom join our zoom and then you can also uh, <coughs> excuse me you can um, also take our live class which happens first Wednesday of every month on our virtual service um, 
what's the difference between passion and calling? Uh, passion can be a calling, but sometimes passion is just a passion. How do you know you're anointed? Uh, very simple. If you're a Christian, you're already anointed. The anointing dwells in you, the Bible says, and it teaches you all things. Take my e-course on anointing. It will clarify a little bit more um, and it's completely free of charge. God can reveal our calling through dreams. Uh, yes, He can. He can reveal our calling through dreams. How can I focus on my calling as a wife with three kids and one special needs? I feel exhausted all the time. Honestly, who says that it's not your calling to help your kids? It is the calling. It's the calling to your children. Um, and so I don't under no circumstances should you feel like you are not fulfilling your calling when you're taking care of your children, especially the one with special needs. You are sharing the love of Christ. You are living out who Jesus is to them. You're discipling them. And they're probably going to go and make a bigger difference. But, um, but it doesn't mean, even if they won't make anything, they're not going to be Billy Graham or Ray Harbonke. It's not about that. You did what God called you to do. I see discerning that says, God's calling is personal. It's not a conference call. I love that. That's, that's a, that, that will preach right there. What if I don't attend a physical church? I would encourage you to do so. I do know that some churches right now are closed. You can join a virtual church. If your church is streaming, stick with, um, stick with the local church. Jesus is into local church. He loves the local church, even the ones that are not perfect. The married couples share, um, and I'm looking aside for my YouTube. The married uh, um, couples share calling or each one of them have their own. Um, very tricky question. Actually, next week, is it next week we're doing live stream um, marriage and ministry? Next week, yay! We're going to go with my wife and we're going to talk about ministry and marriage. So we're going to answer that. So I am sorry, but I we're going to, Luis, I'm going to wait for next week, okay? Next week we're going to address that with my wife. We're going to deal with the topic of marriage and ministry. A lot of different questions. Thank you so much. Um, concerning that. Uh, what do I believe? Uh, okay, those things are going too fast. Are we considered rebellious when a pastor doesn't tell us to deliverance but we do regardless? No, you're not rebellious if you're obeying Jesus. And so now if your pastor doesn't want you to do deliverance in the services and you are doing them in the services, then yeah, I would probably just do them in um, uh, somewhere else, in a small group or something else. But uh, doing deliverance is Jesus' calling to all believers. Okay, so if you believe, he says, cast out demons. So your pastor needs to get on board. Um, how about hearing voices and seeing things? I'm assuming you're asking about knowing the calling through hearing voices. Uh, yes, you can, uh, but it's best to also have a... Um, I mentioned six things. So I would encourage you to go through all of them. And I think I mentioned one of them is God can supernaturally call you into that. Uh, uh, thank you, Herman, for your Cash App donation. Thank you, Lanchik Ivanuk. Thank you, Daniela, for your very generous Bradley. Thank you for your gift. Um, Lakisha, thank you for your gift. Marina, thank you for your gift. Camille, thank you for your gift. Roxanne, thank you for your gift. Herman, thank you for your gift. Evelyn, thank you for your gift. Charlize, thank you for your gift as well. How do you practice humility? Very, very good question. Um, I think without the help of the Holy Spirit, without consciously submitting yourself to elders and others and without being reminded that everything you have is because of His grace um, and honestly being open to correction is huge because you can say you're humble all in that but if you're not going to be open to His correction then um, then yeah you're not um, then you're not being humble and stuff and so um, you use crest whitening strips cause she she <laughs> no I, I don't use uh, whitening strips but I'm assuming you're complimenting me about the whiteness of my my teeth thank you by the way um, can you cast out allergy out of me uh, yes and you can also cast it out of yourself as well um, do I need discipleship from others before entering my calling it's best that you you need discipleship to be a disciple of Jesus and so the better follower of Jesus you are the better um, 
you will be in fulfilling your calling. So yes, I do believe discipleship helps because the problem with people who ent enter into ministry, they have gifts but they don't have, some of them don't have a character that glorifies Jesus. Um, -la 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 -la. Richard, thank you for becoming a partner. Guys, those of you who become partners, really appreciate you guys. Huge, not that we don't appreciate everybody else, we do. But once you become a partner, it helps us so much. Um, monthly, um, I just finished the fasting devotional. We're going to release it next year. And yesterday I finished a fasting e-course, which we're releasing very soon. I'm so, so excited for that. And then working right now on the Holy Spirit book. Almost done with it, but we're going to release it probably in a year and a half. I want to release now quality stuff. We're um, in involving a lot of other people who are helping us to proofread professionally. And so um, it costs money as well. But I want to, if you guys have noticed, like our content on YouTube and everywhere else, it really improved the quality of it. And so we, we have few companies that help us to, I want to make it the best for Jesus. And so, and huge thank you for everybody who saw him because it, it honestly goes into that. Uh, Teresa, thank you for your donation. Jane, thank you for your donation. Jody, thank you for your donation. Um, how do you teach children to truly follow Jesus? I personally think the best way is to do it yourself and then bring them along into your journey. Involve them in church. Uh, take them to church with you. Um, don't skip Sunday church because of anything. Okay, take them there. And then best thing is to be a model for them. Um, do I need discipleship from others? Uh, how do I practice humility? Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay guys, thank you so much. I think I'm going to let you go because I know on the East Coast it's kind of late already. And so um, you can rewatch it. Next week we're going to dive in a little bit deeper concerning calling and ministry. Thank you guys for everybody who has given. Thank you for everybody who's praying. And guys, don't forget I have a Telegram channel. Telegl <laughs> Telegram channel. Um, let's drop the, the Telegram channel right now. So go to Vladimir, go on Telegram, Vladimir Savchuk Ministries. And if you can't spell my first and last name, I don't blame you. Half of the time I can't spell it. So Vladimir Savchuk Ministries. And if you go there, you can subscribe. I, up, I upload their like original clips that we upload on social media so you can download them. So um, subscribe to that. Uh, no cost whatsoever. We, it's just you get a chance to stay up to date uh, with the ministry. And um, I check the messages there. Uh, so and um, yeah, Telegram, Vladimir Savchuk Ministries. Thank you. Good night. God bless you. Until next Thursday.